Hi there. Today we're going to be making some color wheels and HSL boxes inside of Sketch. Now this is great if you're working on a UI where you want customers to be able to select colors inside your product and you want to give them the full range and the full expression of colors. It's pretty easy, so let's jump in and get started. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some reference. So I'm going to just hit R on my keyboard and drag out a square. It can be just about any size. Why don't we do 400 so it's nice and big for us. And here's how I'm going to grab my reference. I'm going to check off fill. We're going to use the sketch palette itself as reference. So I'm going to hit Command Shift 4. And just take a little screenshot and drag that plop right into my canvas. Now, this looks like it would be a bunch of work to put together, but it's also nice and clean and simple, so we're going to use it as the reference point for this design. The first thing we need to do is build this hue and saturation selection. This, this is mostly saturation and lightness up here, so S and L in the HSL, if you've ever heard that. Here's how we're going to make it. We'll start off by just... A plain white fill so we have a solid background. Now I'm going to build multiple fills on top of each other. So I'm going to add another fill. And this fill is going to be 100% red. Make sure you're at alpha 100 on this side. And this, the same thing. Pull it alpha 100. And then our first red, we're going to take the alpha down to 0. Okay, so now it's nice and exposed. And let's use this rotate. There's two ways to kind of do this. I could like pull these around and wait for them to be totally straight, but I'm going to undo that with command Z and use this little rotate here instead. Just hit that a couple times until it's left to right clear to 100% rep. Now we're going to do an additional fill on top of that. And this fill is going to be white at 0% and black at 100%. And just like that, you can see our HSL slider having sort of built itself. Now, if you want, you can also take it and make sure it's in multiply mode. So you get that 100% red showing through, and this makes the red darker. If I hit Command Z and you can see, what you're gonna get is a bunch of like milky brick gray reds here. That's not what we want from this. We want a deep and saturated red. So changing with this little drop down from normal to multiply, look at that. Much deeper, better reds throughout there. So just like that, saturation and lightness box is done. Why don't we hit R and make a couple of rectangles to do the next two boxes? They're not too bad even though I think this next one, people would guess, is a pretty big pain in the butt. Well, here's how we build a hue strip. And this is going to come in handy for a little trick that I'm going to show you down the line. A hue strip will start with white. And we're going to basically just use math to do everything here, or straight numbers, as they say. I'm going to take this gradient, rotate it so it's going in the direction I want, and the same direction as this strip. And then I'm going to make a couple points. And these points you want about even with each other. So what these points need to be is there's sort of a lot of hues represented here, and they work out to be red, green, blue. And this is just an extra red here. And then, of course, yellow, cyan, and magenta, which if you know how colors work on a computer, blue and red make magenta, blue and green make cyan, and green and red make yellow. So we're going to mix these together just using dialing in numbers. So we're going to start with our first, and we're going to say red is 255 in RGB, that's the maximum. Green is 0, blue is 0, and the alpha... 100. Why don't we just make alpha 100 on all of these right now to save us a little bit of time and headache. The very last color, select that, and we're going to make that the same. 
255 red. Now let's do green and blue. Green and blue are the G and B in RGB. So green is going to be 0% red, maximum green, and no blue, zero blue. Great. Now I'll pick our next point, and we're going to make that all the way blue. So zero red, zero green, and max blue. Okay, so this is now just an RGB strip. It doesn't represent all the colors, but it represents a subset of them. Now we're going to use our mouse and just pick three additional points in between these points. So one here, one here, and one about here. And you can eyeball it. Unfortunately, Sketch doesn't give us, uh, at least not that I know of, so I shouldn't speak so fast. I don't know of a way to evenly space these apart in Sketch. Maybe there is. If there is, tell me in the comments. I would love to know. So for these, we're going to mix the two colors together, and here's how we do that. We're going to max out red. This is in between red and in between green. So max red, max green. That's how yellow is made. So now you're also learning about how colors are made digitally. 100% green and 100% blue gets you your cyan and blue and red. And this is why there's two reds, because you need all the blues into the reds. 100% red and 100% blue make pink. So now if you want, make sure that these are all dialed in. The green looks like a little much to me. And just get it so it's just as even as you can eyeball it. And that's great. Now, since that was a bunch of work to build this gradient, I'm going to save it. So I'm going to come into my document colors, and I'm just going to stamp it out. Great. Okay, this next strip is much easier than that one. Check it out. All we'll do is have a nice white background. We're going to use Sketch's image fill. And by the way, by default, it's checker. So great. I'm going to change it to tile. And that's going to take the image and tile it around. And I'll leave it at 100% for now. I just think my height is probably a little bit too much for it. And then I'm going to take the opacity of this down to maybe 25%. So we can still see the checkerboard, but it's not as dark. Now, finally, we're going to take one of our gradients, and we're going to go all the way red, all the way red. The one on the right will be 100. The one on the left will be 0. And now let's rotate it into place. Great. Why don't we put a couple details in here that'll finish this thing up and make it real. I'm going to select all these boxes and make them 12 rounding. Then I'm going to take my two strips and make them 24 tall. That looks better to me. Now select all three and make them, why don't we say 279 wide. Select all three strips and I'm just going to tidy them. <laughs> why don't we make them 32? apart. So nice, clean, evenly spaced. And now let's take their borders. We'll send them to the outside. Why don't we do transparency here too? So we'll do 25% black. And that looks about right to me. And let's build some selection rings. So a good way to do this is why don't we just press O on our keyboard and drag out until we get a nice 24 point. Because remember, these are 24 tall. 24 point ring. Let's fill it in here. Fill it in white. We'll make the border that same outside and 25%. Black. And then I can hit Command D, which duplicates our circle. Be careful, I grabbed a square here, and I'm just going to size it in. Why don't we get to 12? That's great. I'm going to take these two, and I'm going to use my Boolean operation and just punch out that hole. So that looks a little thick to me. I'm going to double-click inside this combined shape. 
select my inner circle and maybe take it up to 16. That looks a little bit better to me. So now because this is 24 and our corners are 12, it fits into the corners perfectly, so that's great. And because they're 24 down here, I can take this and just align it to different points in the strip and everything clicks into place. So let's get rid of our reference. We got it. Things are looking good to me. I'm going to take these and group them. And now watch this. This is one of my favorite things. I'm going to dial into this group and just name a couple of these things before we continue. I'm going to call this hue strip or strip hue. Why is that backwards? Well, what I like to do is box SL, which is saturation lightness. I like to do less specific to more specific naming. This is a pattern I've developed over the years just to, so I, at once I can see this is a strip, it's for hue. This is a strip here, and it's for opacity. Did I spell that right? Opa City. <laughs> this is selector uh, for SL. This is select for hue. And this is select. Having a tough time typing today, I guess, for opacity. I have a tough time typing every day. I'm a designer, not a writer. All right. Now what I want to do is hold down Command and steal one of our selects. And I'm just going to paste it. And it pastes right on top, so I'm going to grab it and pull it over. Now, just like this is 279, I'm going to take this select here, and I'm going to make it 279. Perfect. So this can align itself with this box. And here's the fun stuff. We're going to add a fill. Then I'm going to select my gradient that we built. And we're going to change it to be an angular gradient. So this is going to use the center of this as a pivot point and rotate our rainbow around. So let's choose that. And boom, now we have a color wheel. So if somebody wants to choose colors based on a color wheel, we can do that. That's really handy. And you can use this rotate to choose which one you want uh, as the top. So you get a lot of looks there. And now we can even go ahead and make ourselves a layer style. These are three. And we'll call this SL because it's saturation lightness. I'll hit O. Drag in 158. That's what it says here. I just want it a little bit spaced out. It might need to be 159 inside of a 279 to be even. Just align those up. And now I can pick my SL as appearance. <laughs> and so when if you're going to do this sort of circle thing here, you might need to, because we're cutting off so much of our gradients, we're going to need to adjust them so that they're a little bit more forgiving. Just pull in from the sides so somebody has the full range of selection available. You almost have to treat it as like a square within a circle. So pull in all of your edges to give somebody that. We can double click and we can just steal our same selection rings now. Move that over and scale it up. We do 44. And you can see when I scaled it, it got a little bit uneven. 33 and 44, does that work? Oh, I hit my wrong alignment here. It's going to have to be 34 and 44 to give me an even 10 point stroke. So you can do something like that. And then if you want, you can take our selects and make those a layer style and just call it select. Then maybe you just do like a dot or something and change that to a select style in here. So 
Now, the person has a lot of different controls uh, at their disposal. And of course, you could always just literally include the same opacity slider um, like you want here. And finally, we're going to just group these together. Why don't we call this one color wheel? And I guess this is a kind of a color box or HSL box. And we could take each of these, hit A, put them in a phone size. Thank you, Sketch. Thanks for just cutting off all my edges. And there isn't really a UI where you would use both, but you can see making one makes creating the other one even easier. So a lot of options available to you. I know we went quickly through this one, but I hope you enjoyed it. And if, again, if you find a way to space out that gradient, please let me know in the comments. As always, patrons, you can download this source file and start playing with it immediately uh, to kickstart your own projects or check out the design library tutorial. Maybe you need to add this color picker to your design library and that's easy too. All right, have a great day and keep designing. Music